this episode or this discussion, I will be talking about history and historiography. Um, of course, this will be a uh, This will be uh, this will be about a definition and as well as introduction to historiography, as well as the uh, histor- his, uh, introduction to historiography uh, when it comes to our history, uh, Philippine history. So this is this will serve as our as our introduction. Uh, on what we are going to or how we are going to study history for this uh, semester all right um i've already uh, explained to one of my section now uh, about the uh, the uh, geographical features of our country our nation the philippines so the other the other section is not yet but uh, s- uh, still this will be an introduction still because we, will, we are not yet uh, in the in the ad in the uh, beginning chapters of the resource book that we are using for this semester all right so definition of historiography it is about the writing of history uh, especially the writing of history based on the critical examination of sources the selection of particulars from the authentic materials and the synthesis of particulars into a narrative that will stand the test of critical methods that's the first definition the second will be the principles theory and history of historical writing a course in historiography uh, so this is the product of historical writing a body of historical literature um, in short class this will uh, historiography is the study of history uh, we are just we are going to to uh, critically examine and evaluate the sources of history and somehow this will uh, uh, lead us to define the difference between past and history because there is uh, somehow a distinct distinction of these uh, two terminologies because we might we might uh, misunderstood uh, history as something as the the overall happening or events in the past but it seems like it's not that way okay so historiography is like a history writing how a historian shaped his version of history so we will be we will be you will be uh, immersed as well to the biases and if there is a bias on what way a particular historian or a certain historian will be biased about the history he is writing about and what whose history uh, ka, ka, kanino kaninong uh, kasaysayan yung ating pag-uusapan this will this will also be one of the thing the important the focal point of our discussion because it cannot be your history it cannot be someone's history but the history of our of our ancestors the history of our country all right so let us distinguish first uh, what are the primary and secondary sources used by the historians on interpreting the past <clears throat> first is that the primary sources these are the documents this this can be this this could be in a form of handwritten uh, or digitalized the form since we have already digitalized form of document documents back when the printing press was started or invented we have uh, newspapers magazines and all forms of articles uh, physical objects we have fossils the evidences now the proofs in the past and we are trying to, to, to measure the age of the fossil fuels and artifacts fossils these are the plants and animals well artifacts are the the things used by by the people in the past and oral video accounts these are for those who are witnessed of the events uh, secondary sources these are materials made long after the event like for example the works now of Theodoro Agoncillo and Renato Constantino like the works of Agoncillo uh, the most celebrated one is the revolt of the masses as well as the prizes of the republic while Constantino um, the past revisited all right and I will be talking that a bit as well later on so the past versus history so you have to know that 
not all historians uh, i know I, I know that not all of you as well would agree this is this thing sean but this is quite useful f for all of us so to know this knowledge the difference of past and history so the past this will be something or in no, no, not something but everything all the things happened in the past events uh, these are the events the people who lived and the thoughts they had they had because right now if you're a historian how would you know that that thought of that that kind of thought that you have right now would be the same with with the thoughts they have during their time of course you will be biased in that case because that would be subjective it is coming from you and you just assume that it would be their thoughts or that that is their interpretation so according to elton jeffrey the past's objective reality is guaranteed it is beyond being altered for any purpose or whatsoever what he is saying class is this regardless how we interpreted the past it's it's uh, truthful uh, uh, objective reality it's truthfulness by its own is really true it is just how uh, it cannot be altered by any by anyone <clears throat> excuse me it cannot be altered by anyone for any purpose or whatsoever although the thing here is the, the the writings of the historians is the one being cascaded being read by by our time and those who live in the past has nothing to do about it anymore they cannot correct it anymore if if there is really inaccuracies on the account of the historian so while history classes are the left of the past so this is things that was left like artifacts fossils uh, written accounts like history books or articles a memory or in short leftovers of the past so imagine if you are going to imagine to, to, to differentiate there's really a big distinction between the past and history because history in this case in this lens is just saying it is only the portion of the past it is not really the whole so from one whole uh, sheet of paper somehow it's already in the half or in the one fourth to the one eighth piece of the whole so somehow you might say that how can we know the whole past if the history is not saying or it will not be telling us the complete truth in the past to say for example world war uh, in the world war ii what was it, what, what happened although there were documentaries already about world war ii from Europe to China to, to our to Philippines to, to, to Japan to India to, to, to America and things in the Middle East like such there were, there were already many documentaries that will say this is the truth because this is a documentary by some prominent institutions and medias but who knows all right so why is this difference of history and past significant? Of course, the difference is central to much debate about history and what comprises historical knowledge. Uh, let's say, for example, um, about Renato Constantino, no, our very own historians, Renato Constantino and Teodoro Agoncillo. You know that uh, Teodoro Agoncillo wrote about the history of the Philippines um, starting, if I'm not mistaken, uh, started uh, 1872, the start of the revolution. It was the uh, that the cry of uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's in Balintawak. Then to 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 exile of Emilio Aguinaldo to to Hong Kong as the result of the Pact of the Act na Bato, no? the, the truce between the Spanish um, soldiers and Emilio Aguinaldo, na Primo de Vera, no? in the sight of uh, the commander of the Spanish soldiers. Um, Right after that is the, the coming back of Aguinaldo until it surrendered no, to, to America. But uh, Renato Constantino was not uh, was not uh, convinced with the with the account of the Doro Gonzillo and he even uh, refuted that uh, the even 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 the 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 absence of Aguinaldo the revolution continues. Even the surrender of Aguinaldo to America, the revolution continued. So there, were, there, there, there is this kind of uh, debate really to, to accounts or historical na na narratives. So there is a past, but how do we know about it? How accurate can be our interpretations of it be? 
do our interpretation change the past? Let's say, for example, in some cases, no, in a particular event, usa ka pang hitabo, even the, the, the eyewitnesses have conflicts on how they understood the, the event kung unsa un sa pagkahitabo ah. Because, because there, there is a bias on it in a subjective way. How they are influenced, uh, I mean how their knowledge influenced by their uh, individual point of view. So, there are three uh, epistemological perspectives on looking at the history. So, there is this uh, perspective of the empiricists, the empiricism, a point of view. History as an area of knowledge is an endeavor to know the objective past. Objective past, you know, this, that, the thing, the, 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 the events in the past that cannot be, that cannot be uh, disputed because objective past is the goal. So the past is knowable according to the empiricists and it is unalterable. Delicious bago. That likes, for example, the Holocaust, no? the Jewish Holocaust, the Holocaust. Gipang, gipang dala sila no, sa ghetto uh, they are being massacred and then they're being killed they're discriminated and all forms of violences imagine and since like the Germany Nazi Germany right now there are some uh, uh, opinion that they're trying to revise history by you know by uh, trying to forget that period that they have uh, they have uh, you know if you can imagine uh, they treated that the, the, the Jewish people in that way. So there are remnants of the past left over. These are the primary sources like fossil fuels, fossils, and artifacts. And the careful historian can fully understand what actually happened. So this is the point of view of the embracist that through the evidences and proofs of the past, they can understand what happened in the past. So the other, the second one is the rank. I don't know how to pronounce it. The rank, whatever. This was the point of view of Leopold von Rank, uh, who wrote long histories of many, you no, know, many volumes. He said that we should write history as it actually was, still in an objective form. But how can a historian will say that this is the objective form if the other historian, if it will conflict, it will go against? or it is contrary to the account of the other historian. So, for, for Rank, historians should refrain from interpretation and just write down how things happened. Because, uh, uh, maybe he said that way because there are, there are people or there are historians who tend to interpret things. Nga mo siguro nabuhat ni Nicordapio, Nicordapia in that particular event because this and this and that. That is interpretation. All you have to do is to write what you have seen and what you have witnessed or what just what really happened. So this is for Rank. Okay, so he said he we should write history as it actually was. But uh, he said there were, uh, what are the uh, perspectives or what is the stand of the empiricists, uh, empiricists on bias and perception? Uh, doesn't the historian's own experience shape his interpretation of primary historical sources? Yeah, ha, duna by dili ba nga dunay ko an dunay takong epekto ang ang experience o sa kahistoryan sa iyang pag-interpret sa mga primary historical sources nga iya hang magather let's say for example no katong mga na discovered yung mga manunggol jar but uh, you know the, we have perspectives of the of the theory of the Philippine race Filipino race it would be from Austronesian in origin or what is in Malay origin or Indonesian origin or whatsoever. So of course history is of bias, but the empiricists will argue that with keen insight and self-criticism, the historian can overcome bias. So according to the empiricists that there should be self-criticism, there should be a thorough no, and keen insight, I mean, careful investigation, uh, an historian can overcome bias. That's how they deal with bias. So the empiricist acknowledges the limits of historical knowledge and the problems of bias, but ultimately believes that the past can be objectively known. Still, although they have, there there are hindrances and limitations to know to know the, the the whole thing in the past, they still believe that it can be objectively known. Uh, the, the 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 second, I'm sorry. 
the, the rank, uh, rank is not the second approach. The second approach is the skeptical approaches. Uh, the rank is in support with the empiricist perspective or approach. Skeptical approaches, these are far from the empiricist approach because they are skeptical. Uh, the gist or the focus of the skeptics is that the past does not know does not exist now it's no longer existing so there are only leftovers and they can only be interpreted and we cannot access the past of course we cannot access the past we cannot go back there and then look what happened so they are skeptics of knowing the past objectively they, they cannot they, these are the points over the, the perspectives of the skeptics skeptics uh, historians no uh, it cannot be known already, but uh, through the, the proof, the fossils, and the artifacts, we can interpret. So what is historiograph historiography then? Whatever we write down about the past, it's ultimately a language game. Uh, when we say language game, it depends on how the historians use the language, no? Because uh, let's say, for example, according to uh, Klebnikov, in his uh, decrees to the planets, he said, the son obeys my syntax. He said, what he was saying is that uh, it seems like uh, things are agreeing to his account, yang interpretations. While um, another historian says that uh, the past obeys my interpretation. So it seems like it is already the, the past who is agreeing to, to, to their accounts. Okay. So, knowing the past, the skeptics argue that we cannot know all the past. We in our being are removed. We are ontologically cut off from the past. Of course, we are cut off from, from the past. Uh, that's, how, that's how skeptics and that's true. And then we can no longer access it. So that's why if we could be there, the past is too vast, too large for us to know. Somehow, skeptics is, is lazy no? to, to study what was uh, what, to study the happenings in the past. But somehow they have, they have a point. They have a big point actually because it's not accessible and they are just here. Skeptic uh, historians are just here to interpret. Alright. So knowledge and power. This is also important. This is also plays a relevant um relevant role in, in in history writing knowledge and power that which gets written down and remembered is, is usually the stories of the elite the rich and the powerful can you remember the saying that the histories are written by the victors disulat lamang sa mga victorious even in the world war II, why americans are illustrated or, or appeared to be heroic, appeared to be, uh, to be, uh, to be, uh, sila mo'y, mo'y, uh, mga maayo, they are good, uh, conquerors, and then they came to liberate, while the Japanese are treated as, as, uh, the worst of all, savage, the worst of all conquerors during the World War II. So somehow, I agree sometimes it, was, it is written by the victors. So that's why the stories of the elite, the rich, and the powerful matters as well. Because katong mga stories of mga lowly persons, lowly people, uneducated and, and uh, uh, ignorant uh, perspectives are much more ignored in the not being given attention. So knowing that, the historians can try to write oppressed groups back in history so then ay mga historians nga they can criticize and then they can they can uh, use derogatory terms to 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 describe uh this group of people like say for example the colonial perspectives like the the american perspectives in writing the philippine history as well the the uh, as well as the spaniards they use they tend they always use derogatory terms to describe as filipinos as pagans as barbarians as savage and civilized imagine that kind and we cannot accept that because we have our own culture we have our own past we have our own identity and, and the origin and we are not the way they describe us bias uh, every historians of cultures they have background they have origin they're going to be biased no matter what 
Of course, in the list, uh, some are trying to neutralize, neutralize, and to to uh, to have the least bias that they can be. Um, still, there is still bias because uh, their interpretations are sometimes influenced by their culture. So the times we live in in right history, our experiences, our media, values, norms, all shape and to some extent determine our interpretations. Let's say for example this time of political crisis in the Philippines, if you are a supporter of Duterte, you tend to always uh, appreciate Duterte, you tend to always uh, watch the improvement and progress of the Duterte administration, the projects, and uh, all what he said or who, what he's saying is very good to your, to, your, to your ears because you're following him and you tend to criticize the, the opposing party because you have not even uh, you have not given any attention at all to, to hear what they're saying to what projects they have accomplished because that's why, uh, that, that is why some of the, the territories will say ano bang ambag mo because they failed to examine and to know what is the contribution of the other party and the person so that's why if you want to be to to, to have the the least bias in yourself you have to listen to both all right the third this is the third the first is the empiricist approach second is skeptics approach and third is the pragmatic approach the pragmatic approach and uh, most historians fall in between the conservative empiricist approach of Elton and the second is from the subjectivist. There is no such thing as objective truth view of the skeptics. So empiricist then an objective past while skeptics there's no objective truth. Alright so on truth. Uh, truth can be known. The past is real. Yes it's true. The past is real. It, it cannot be it, 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 we cannot disregard or we cannot deny the past. Though we cannot access the past, we can know real things about it. Of course, these things we know are limited by bias, language, culture, and our past. Because th th there can be differences with the language as well. Um, let's say, for example, if you're going, you're going to study the Philippine history, and you have no primary sources only available are the, those written in Spanish, written by the Spaniards. If you're going to use that one, if you do not know Spanish language, then you cannot, you, you, you somehow being hindered by language barrier. And also for the culture, what we have right now is somehow the, his, the, the culture of our past, of our ancestors is no longer that kind of imminent today for the reason that it's already been uh, filled by the Spanish, I mean the foreign cultures. So, but these obstacles can be in large part to overcome. Of course, this can be overcome. Overcame. Our interpretations are subjective because they come from subjects. Yes, it comes from subjects, from people. But that subjectivity is not wholly limiting. We can be aware of it and compensate for it by being critical, aware, and thorough. We should not be, uh, con be consumed by, by our personal biases, by, our, by emotion, most especially, by, by how we already, by how we understood uh, people, especially on a, on, on a one-sided way. And then, if we are, we will be, we will let ourselves consumed by, by, by bias, then we cannot be a good historian. So, on bias, it exists. And the competent historian engages it and tries to neutralize it. So it is not a wholly limiting factor to accurately describe the past but an obstacle. This is not a limiting factor but only an obstacle. We go limiting factor, you cannot go forward na. Well, an obstacle, you can overcome it. So does all this matter? Most historians spend very little time agonizing over what kind of historians they are because they do not really think about it. Instead, they just do history using a lot of sources they can and their best historical judgment. They, they study, they research, and they write. Still, we should know that historians disagree over the nature of historical knowledge and that these debates do have a real effect on the historical knowledge we have. So, because uh, especially if the sources we used are different, no? Or there is a new 
uh, uh, discoveries of fossils and artifacts, of course, what was written might be affected no, by what or what what by what is recently discovered. All right, other kinds of history. Uh, historians write history through different lenses, like the annals. History relying on inside small areas of knowledge. Uh, this is popular in France in the mid 20th century. Uh, fragmentation of history, like for example, feminist writing women back into history after centuries of their absences. They were absent not due to the supremacy or the patriarchal point of view that only men men is much superior than women. Intellectual the history of ideas, social the history of society. Military, the history of wars, more or less, and legal le history of the law, and so forth. Racial, political, quantitative, and the list goes on. But in the uh, Philippine history, uh, we are being uh, interpreted in various ways. Uh, the perspectives of of the elite people, the ilustrado, uh, the perspective in the patri patriarchal pers patriarchal perspectives, the emphasis of uh, the heroism of men, uh, those who who were leading the revolt and the uh, and the wars for liberation or independence, and the uh, perspectives of uh, of the of the low people, a sort of like like such, and 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 the, in the colonial historiography in their perspective uh, class. For the Spanish colonizers, they describe us by two period. First is the period of darkness before the arrival, and uh, they 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 describe us that we are in our way to backwardness. You know, say we are opposing progress instead of progressing. We are uh, I don't know. No, we are going into opposite direction because they said we are uncivilized. We are pagans. We're savage. We are whatsoever so that they, they use the derogatory term. And then in their arrival, there is a period of advancement and enlightenment. Of course, because uh, they bring, they brought here the what is in 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 the in the Western world. Maybe if uh, if they let us be, what, I do not know what we are right now. But uh, uh, I guess. We are also into progress in a different manner, in a sense that we are carrying our original culture and uh, laws or whatever. Well, for the American colonizers, it's also the same. They said that there is a period that we, before the arrival, we are in a period of darkness because they criticized this, the Spanish uh, colonizers as they forgot to, to, to teach us physical or personal hygiene as well as to prepare us for political um, uh, independence that we can run our government by our own and then era of enlightenment for their uh, for their arrival or for their occupancy in the in the Philippines so after World War II historiography and there is already the emergence of Filipino scholars who challenge the views of the colonial narratives, of course, it can, it is not acceptable to, to describe us in that way, and uh, they challenge you no know, the views of the of the uh, narratives of uh, of the Spaniards of the America. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you know to, to describe it in a manner that uh, we are into a backward uh, direction and somehow it it is not acceptable. But uh, maybe we could uh, admit that we are not really we are ignorant when it comes to to uh, industrialization by that time but we are already in the trade and uh, in just a matter of time it will also be introduced to us by the traders so agoncillo in his uh, account highlighted the role of the filipino reformists and the revolutionaries up to the end of the revolution as the focal point of the country's nation building he also emphasized the events prior the revolution as lost history, the events before 1872. While Constantino, Renato Constantino, ad advanced the idea of people's history by trying to search and to find the lost voices no, of the Filipino people. While Salazar uh, emphasized the value of our Austronesian roots of defining our culture.
all right so hopefully uh guys you have learned something with this past and history and the uh, historiography and how and how the uh the this terminologies play in 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 the field of academia and in, in the field of history as well and of course as an introduction to to how this play i mean on how historians write history as a challenge to yourselves as well if you are writing historical narratives if you are being being uh, instructed or tasked to do so uh, in the future so uh, of course historiography is the the history writing with the critical uh, evaluation uh, with the keen insight and of course you have to overcome bias and you have to also maximize be resourceful with it, with it come, when it comes to using available resources, primary and secondary, and of course to be careful with your interpretations as to avoid uh, bias. Of course, you have three approaches, as I said, that you can use. You could be a, a historian in yourself as as empiricist, uh, trying to to uh, achieve objective truth. Uh, the second is the skeptic is that just to, to interpret the history or the third is in a pragmatic point of view uh, which will you are in neutral maybe you could uh, uh, somehow achieve both or or or, or, or maybe you will just neutral in, in two stance all right so I guess um, I have already introduced to you what is history the definition of history and what is historiography and be very careful because our history is until now is very shaped no and uh, the emergence no 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 the emergence uh, strongly influenced by the elite people at the, the time what we have right now is the oligarchy who played a vital role i do not know if it's in a good play or bad play because they also tend to to uh, always put their uh, self-interest on, on on the way let's say for example if uh, their uh, candidate for president um as won the election of course they would ask for their payment maybe their uh, position in the government or the voice in the government or whatever they ask for the government the government to sign or whatsoever uh, like such and that's all for 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 this topic class um